Hi, and you're now with the Forerunner Chronicles. All right, everybody, so recently, the Grammy Award-winning, critically acclaimed artist known as D'Angelo, he released what appeared to be a highly anticipated album entitled Black Messiah. And evidently, there's a lot that I could say about that album title, but that's not my real point of interest at this time, so we're going to leave that alone. But if you do some background on D'Angelo, it becomes clear very quickly that this is a man that has some pretty strong religious ties. Apparently, both of his parents are Pentecostal ministers. But here's what I found really interesting. In an interview that D'Angelo did with GQ magazine just leading up to the newest album release of his, he gives you an open window into realizing that this is an individual that is very conscious not only of the presence of spirits within our world, but he's also very conscious of what type of influence these spirits have upon the minds of men and what role that music plays in this interaction between the spirits and humanity. Just listen to some of these statements that D'Angelo made when he sat down with GQ magazine. Take a look. You know what they say about Lucifer, right? Before he was cast out, D'Angelo asks me now, every angel has their specialty and his was praise. They say he could play every instrument with one finger and that the music was just awesome. And he was exceptionally beautiful, Lucifer, as an angel he was. But after he descended into hell, Lucifer was fearsome, he tells me. There's forces that are going on that I don't think a lot of blanks that make music today are aware of, he says. It's deep, I felt it. I felt other forces pulling at me. He stubs out his cigarette and leans towards me, taking my hand. This is a very powerful medium that we are involved in. He says gravely, I learned at a very early age that what we were doing in the choir was just as important as the preacher. It was a ministry in itself. We could stir the pot, you know. The stage is our pulpit and you can use all of that energy and the music and the lights and the colors and the sound. But you know, you've got to be careful. So as you heard for your own self, D'Angelo knows more than a little bit about the presence of angels and demons within our world. And although he's not 100% accurate in his understanding that Lucifer had the ability to play every single instrument with just one finger and produce amazing music by doing so because there's not one single scripture in the Bible that teaches that. However, he's on point in his understanding that Lucifer was an immensely beautiful creature and that from the very beginning of his existence, he was a master of music. You see, the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, beginning at verse 12 concerning Lucifer, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou wast in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Now notice how all of these precious stones and jewels, including gold, were used as a covering for Lucifer. That word covering in the original Hebrew means that the gold and all of these precious stones, these jewels, they were used as decorative accessories to make Lucifer appear more attractive or more appealing than he already physically was. Now, don't you find it interesting how jewelry and gold that reflects light and sparkling decorations that reflect light or just simply lights themselves, how all of these are used as staples in the music industry to make music artists or music performers appear more attractive or more appealing than they may physically really be. And really, in all actuality, it makes absolute sense why all of these things would be used in the music industry. You see, because the Bible tells us back in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 13 concerning Lucifer, the workmanship of his tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now I have to take some time to break this one down because it's serious. You see, when you look at tablets, tablets are like percussion instruments. And when you look at pipes, contextually, it's speaking about his vocal organs. So we're talking about his wind pipes and his vocal cords. So what you have there are wind instruments and you have string instruments. All of the primary instruments, percussion, 
wind, and string, all of them were prepared in Lucifer from the day that he was created. The word prepared means arranged, set up, or established. So in other words, from the time he was created, God made him so that he could masterfully arrange music and use the primary instruments to manipulate them to make amazing, captivating music. But even more important than that, the Bible said the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee from the day that thou was created. Now that word workmanship is really important because the word workmanship means industry or business. Now you put that together with prepared and you know what the Bible is telling us? It's telling us that from the time that Lucifer was created, God set him up to be the chief over the music industry or the industry of music or the business of music. So why wouldn't they be using all of these sparkling adornments in the music industry? Because the chief or the ruling angel over the music industry is the one that's directing the activities that are taking place within the music business today. And ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand one of the primary functions of angels according to the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6 is to give worship to God. But the angel Lucifer said in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 14 that he would ascend above the heights of the clouds and that he would be like the Most High. Therefore, after he rebelled against the throne of God, all of his gifts and talents which God placed in him, he has now perverted to use not to give glory to God or to bring worship to God, but rather to bring worship to himself. And what you have to understand is that the devil, the fallen angel Lucifer, he's not by himself in seeking to utilize the music or the music industry as a medium by which he can seduce the minds of men to either directly or indirectly give him worship or pay him homage. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 concerning Lucifer and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Notice that the devil has some angels that are under his governing. And the Bible says concerning angels in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. So what's going on here is that there is music that is being produced by the devil and his fallen angels that are actually conveying their spirits or conveying the spirits of angels or projecting these spirits of demonic beings into you, controlling your mind, leading you into rebellion against the throne of God. And if you don't believe that the music has the ability to convey spiritual influences on you, then just listen to the words of D'Angelo. When you played, when you played with Mary, you had a lot of little church. I remember asking you, like, where'd you find these musicians? And you said you found them in the church. A lot of the younger guys were. Yeah, the younger yeah. guys. Yeah, definitely. So that still is a is a mother load where you find the great black musicians. Absolutely. I mean, the the thing about the church is, uh, what I learned early. Um, They used to say this when I was going to church. They used to say, you know, don't go up there for no form or fashion. You know? So I guess what that means is, you know, listen, we up here singing for the Lord. So don't be up here trying to be cute. You know? Because <laughs> we don't care about all that. We just want to feel what you, you know, and what, what the Spirit is moving through you. And it's the best place to learn that. You know, so you, you shut yourself down and, um, and you let whatever's coming, come, you know, come through you. And Talk about the process of, of recording, because I mean, it, it seems like it's, you, it's a very, seems like a very sacred process. You have a case, I mean, you know, you're not someone who's, uh, have a bunch of people in the studio, it's not a party when you record. Um, what, what is your thoughts about that? Why do you go in that direction? Is it just, you say the onion? trying to get in deeper it's the onion yeah but you know you're putting your voice down on tape because i still use tape and you know it's about capturing the, the spirit and i learned uh, we all learned a lot working on voodoo and that was such a, a great time and i'm kind of a first take dude 
So the first time I cut that mic on and the spirit is there and what comes on the mic, I mean, even if I'm mumbling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I like to keep a lot of that initial thing that comes out, you know, because that's the spirit. Now, for some of you out there, you heard what D'Angelo had to say, so that's sufficient for you. You're satisfied. But for others of you out there, you're not going to be satisfied until you hear the whole truth on the matter, right? Well, then here it is. Even the Bible teaches exactly what D'Angelo had to say, that music has the ability to project spirits into men. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 15, we're told of an instance in which Elisha the prophet was approached by two kings which requested of him to prophesy unto them whether or not they should go up into battle against their enemies. And the Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 15 that Elisha said, But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Now a minstrel is an individual that plays music on a stringed instrument. So as this musician was playing music, holy music on his instrument, the hand of the Lord, which is biblical language for the presence of the Spirit of God, came upon Elisha and possessed him so that he could prophesy unto the kings. Now that's serious because Elisha had a double portion of the Holy Spirit which God gave unto Elijah which many deem to be the most powerful prophet in the word of God which is telling us that music is a potent, extremely powerful medium to project the spirit into the minds of men. Matter of fact, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 23, we are told of Saul, the king of Israel, how he was possessed with an evil spirit and how David was called to play the harp for him. And when David would play the harp with his hand, the Bible says that Saul was refreshed, he became well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So not only does music have the ability to make a man come under the influence of a spirit, but it also has the ability to cast out a spirit from a man. In this case, the Holy Spirit came into an individual and an evil spirit was made to depart from that person. But what if the gift of music is perverted? What if the industry or the business of music is perverted, not for the worship and glory of God, but for the worship and glory of Satan? then it can be used to bring man under the possession of a demonic spirit and at the same time it can cause the presence of the spirit of God to depart from a man. And that's serious because the Bible says in the book of John chapter 16 and verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit's responsibility is to guide us into all truth, to make us comprehend the truth and to empower us to walk in obedience to the truth. And the Bible tells us in John chapter 17 and verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Therefore, if the music that you're listening to is causing the Spirit of God to depart from you, that means the music that you're listening to is shackling you in a state of darkness and deception that will completely cripple your ability to ever comprehend the word of truth. That means you can never be holy because the Bible says, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Furthermore, if the music that you're listening to is causing the spirit of truth to depart from you, destroying your ability to understand the word of truth, that means the music that you're listening to is attacking your ability to have faith. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you can't comprehend the word of God when it's spoken to you, then you can not exercise faith. And if you can not exercise faith, then you'll be stuck in a state of sin. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 14 and verse 23, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And the Bible says in Romans 6 and verse 23, that the wages of sin is death. You're listening to death through your speakers, homie. That's what's going on right now. The Bible warned us that this would be exactly what would transpire in these last days. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible tells us, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter days, in the last days, some shall depart from the faith, 
giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The devil is using the music industry, the music business, to draw people into a state of deception that will bring them to utter destruction and death. And it sounds good to you, doesn't it? Listen, this is serious what we're talking about here. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 15, that which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. In other words, the things that transpired in the past, they're taking place again in our present day society. And those things which will take place in the very near, the very near future, they've already at least in principle taken place in the past. And God is warning you. You better take a look at history because history is getting ready to repeat itself. And history tells us that in the past, music was used to lead men into idolatry and image worship, which in principle means that men were led to worship the devil. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 3 of an event in which King Nebuchadnezzar, which was the king of Babylon, he set up a golden image in his kingdom and he made a decree, he made a law for every person in his kingdom, no matter what their station in life was. They had to come down and stand before this image. And then he had one of his heralds cry out and say, at the time they hear the music playing, they have to bow down and worship the image. And if they don't, they'll be killed. And ladies and gentlemen, when that music played, everybody bowed down. And let me tell you, Amongst that group, there were thousands that knew the true and living God. They supposedly were worshipers of the God of heaven, the God of the Ten Commandments. But because they compromised day after day and they listened to the music of Babylon and got caught up in the events of Babylon, when the music played, the seducing spirits removed them from their faith and they gave up the truth and they entered into idolatry. There were only three amongst them that stood up and remained faithful to God. Only a minority will be willing to turn away from the lies and the deceptions that are being promoted in the world. And guess what? We are getting ready to be faced with the same issue of bowing down and worshiping the image of the beast. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 13 beginning at verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many should not worship the image should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy nor sell, save he that had the mark of the beast, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The music industry and this music is cultivating within you a mentality to make you believe that you cannot live without this system. You need the cars, you need the money, you need everything that this music industry is telling you you need to live and be accepted by society. And when the image of the beast scenario becomes a reality and the mark of the beast is presented before you and you are told you'll be cut off from the system if you don't bow down, you're going to say, how low can I go? God warns us in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into his cup of indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they which keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. In that hour, only those who have faith will stand against the image. Only those who daily surrender their hearts to Jesus Christ that they might be purified by the truth, made holy to stand as children of the living God in this corrupt world, only they will stand when the issue of the image of the beast becomes a tangible reality. And guess what? It's coming. So the question is, will you stand? 
or are you now being seduced and ready to fall? I want you to think about it and please make a wise decision. As always, this is the forerunner. Whether you like it or not, the truth is the truth. Thank <laughs> you.